Punch me later. The air was April. And it was a while since her warm eyes cuddled my face, like the arms of a lonely lover welcoming her husband back from a cold war. To say I missed her was an understatement. That spring, the way her teeth ran free from her lips when she laughed, reminded me of the freedom the slaves must felt when Abraham Lincoln declared the Emancipation Proclamation and their souls were finally able to soar with their dreams. We were friends back then, with no worries or expectations between us, just chemistry that we only talked about with our body language. Both poets with tongues so sharp, you would never guess it was made from the same flesh we daily died to. We always had our way with words, but we never took advantage of them. Respected the art form God placed in our hearts as if it could literally feel King David's blood galloping through our veins. I often took advantage of us sporadic Chicago visits though. Besides, it's not every day you can share your life with a female version of yourself. I miss those mornings when we arose from our slumber, drained from the previous nights when we talked the moon to sleep and the stars grew tired of our company. How we manhandled our moments together and how our dominant personalities coexisted well like two humble kings at a feast, respect being the cornerstone of the relationship. This was us in retrospect. This was us before our true feelings shot from our hearts, flew out of our mouths and landed in each other's lives like two beautifully made missiles we didn't quite know what to do with. Admiring the way they were well constructed but fearing that they might explode at any time to blow off the limbs of our emotions and I knew this. I knew this because our relationship brought out the war in her. Her heart became a battlefield. Her tongue turned into a shield and her eyes were like two swords that cut deep with every stare. And her warrior-like behavior shook the marrow out of my bones, confused about how I became the enemy in the matter of months, started to question her love for me. And then one day the Lord spoke and said, Preston, if you have been hurt in battle too many times to count, you will adopt some guerrilla war type tactics too. I'm calling you to love her, not like you, but like me unconditionally, with the type of love that would never leave, even when her sharp rejection cuts the skin of your pride and the fear of being vulnerable starts to shiver your soul. Remember how you first rejected my love too, but I still pursued you with ocean-like passion, and then I wooed you like a hopeful romantic. And even when your sins felt like the nails that drove their rusty bodies into my divine hands to pin me to a cross that I built, I still chose to love you. So I prayed. I ask God to forgive me for not loving selflessly like him and in my imperfections to teach me how to love a flawed woman the way he loves his flawed church. And I kid you not, it felt like God cracked open my sternum, planted 1 Corinthians 13 in the soil of my heart and watered that spirit-led scripture every time I was in his presence, my love grew for her. So today I stand, a fully bloomed garden of a man ready to love like Adam the first time he saw Eve in Eden. And I bet you was reminiscent of the first time I laid eyes on you. Three years ago, you stood on this stage and declared how the Lord broke the shackles of homosexuality off of your predestined life with boldness roaring out of your mouth as if a lion lived in your throat. And I saw the truth that day. I saw a young woman longing for righteousness like lungs long for air. And I guess that explains why it was so hard for me to breathe when you spit. Your testimony held the crowd together like the sea holds the sunrise. And at the end of your poem, when you told every woman in the room that they were beautiful, I believed you because the sincerity soaring from your chest sounding like the cry of a caged bird longing for sky. You spoke like a gentle storm. Calm enough. Calm enough to ease our anxious souls, but violent enough to lift us off of our feet when you finished. And when you finished, I said to myself, yo, who is this girl? <laughs> and how did she just melt my face off? I never told you, but you are the virtue my eyes have unknowingly been longing to gaze upon. A real life Proverbs 31 woman in the flesh who soon will become my homie, and then my best friend, and later on my boo thing. 
And I want you to know that through the years, you have inspired me to be a better man. You have challenged me to love like fragile hearts can't break, no matter how hard we try. Just like our father, who doesn't love us according to our yesterdays, but every day chooses to humble himself to love a creation despite their unworthiness. So all this to say, I desire to love you this way. I believe that there's a beautiful covenant waiting for us on the other side of this relationship. I believe, I believe that there's a beautiful covenant waiting for us on the other side of this relationship. <laughs> a new covenant filled with love, pain, and joy, and sacrifice that all brings glory to the king who rose us from the dead. So with that said, I'm coming down there. so much. Oh my God. Will you do me the honors of marrying me? I know this is gonna happen. Will you marry yes. <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> now why don't you two hey go back there y'all hang out. Go ahead, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Come on up here. Come up here. Let's go. Here you go. You're going to need that for your new seat. You're moving. I, I would like, I would like to be the first to introduce my man Preston and his fiance. Jackie Hill. Y'all go get, get on backstage and do Christian. Shake hands. Get, don't you get too close. That's good. A little space. Yeah. 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 Now, hey, y'all leave room for the Holy Spirit in between you, okay? You ain't married yet. You ain't married yet. Now, I thought I had a good proposal, man. But that was, that was pretty tight. I mean, the brother, my speech was like three sentences, you know what I'm saying? The brother rhymed for like nine minutes. Good, googly good. Y'all please give it up for the performance and the proposal of Mr. Preston Perry. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is TQ, Executive Director of the Passion for Christ Movement. I hope you guys enjoyed the poem with Preston's proposal to Jackie. Even just editing it brought a little tear to her brother's eyes. We're actually looking to follow them throughout their engagement leading up to their marriage. If that's something you're interested in seeing, let us know in the comments below and we'll get it out to you. Also, if you can follow us and you want to keep up with what's going on at P4CM, check us out at P4CM.com. Sign up for our newsletter and you get the latest updates on what's going on here. You can also check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Now on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, we're just slash P4CM. It's simple. Facebook made it a little harder for us, though. So you got to go to Facebook slash 
Passion for Christ movement. And we are looking to shorten it though. Uh, they have to have at least five letters so P4CM didn't work. So if you do know something cool that we could change it to that's five letters or more, let us know in the comments and we'll hook that up. Thanks guys. Peace.